Episode 3 of The History of Arrowhead Springs covers the last days of infirmary founder David Noble Smith and the Springs' first hotel era as it transitions into a health resort. Arrowhead Springs, California's ideal resort tells the entire history of this historical place, including many rare photos. Mark Landis, the author, loves local history and does freelance writing for Inland Empire newspapers. You can get a copy of this book at LandisPublications.com. David Noble Smith was at Arrowhead Springs for about 21 years. He was always improving the property and working hard towards finding a cure for consumption. Mark Landis spells out in his book, Arrowhead Springs, California's ideal resort, that there were many reasons that there wasn't more financial success. Two of them were that there was a lot of economic uncertainty during the post-Civil War years, and secondly, that it was hard to travel into San Bernardino and then get up the hill to the springs. In the early 1880s, David took two different mortgages on the property, trying to keep it functioning financially. Even this seemed not enough, so in 1883, David leased some of his property to Robert Darby of Los Angeles. Darby added Sylvester Lyman also of Los Angeles to manage the property. As Mark Landers commented, Arrowhead Springs for the first time had money backing it, and the infirmary would never be the same again. Darby and Lyman went to work on the property. They tore down some of the old infirmary buildings and commenced to construct a hotel building. It was about 40 feet by 90 feet and was two stories. Arrowhead's first hotel had a covered veranda and overlooked the pond that David put in. After the hotel was built, Darby and Lyman placed an ad in a Los Angeles newspaper telling of the new accommodations at Arrowhead Springs and how to get there by taking the train and stage. During the renovation of the facilities David became very sick. The man who spent so much energy trying to heal others succumbed to his own illness and passed away on March 14, 1885. He was only 53 years old. He left his wife Mary and their two living children. David was buried at the springs near his daughter Mary, who passed on years earlier. Though he tried, David left this world without finding a cure for consumption. Interesting as it may be, the hotel burnt down only three days after David Noble Smith's death. The circumstances now gave Darby and Lyman full control of the property at Arrowhead Springs. As Mark Landis puts it in his book, the ashes of the hotel had hardly cooled when Darby and Lyman began constructing a fine new 40-room, three-story hotel. At breakneck speed Arrowhead Springs now beheld its second hotel. Darby and Lyman benefited from a better economy than David Noble Smith had during his time at the Springs, as well as the increase of train travel into San Bernardino. People could now come from far off to enjoy the healing properties of the Springs. They could come into the city by train and then transfer to a stagecoach to make their way up into Waterman Canyon to the new beautiful hotel. Within a couple of years, Darby and Lyman built two more wings onto the hotel, bringing it to the size you see in this photo from the San Bernardino Historical and Pioneer Society. This photo shows a horse-drawn carriage that is stopped on the road going up to the Arrowhead Springs Hotel. This was from a non-credited website. 
However, like so many rare photos of the, the hotels, Mark Landis has this photo in his book. Mark dates this photo to around 1888. This photo, like the previous one, was off the internet. In Mark's book, it is credited to the Steve Shaw collection. It is interesting to study this photo and realize the lack of trees and vegetation. May be a result of the fire. This changing condition has probably existed in the area of the springs forever. Given to the fact that fires are so prevalent there. Here is a complete list of the hotel and forest fires that have burned in the area of Arrowhead Springs in recorded times. In 1888 a large bath house was put in, and Mark Landis explains that at that time, rooms at the hotel ranged from $8 to $12 a week, and baths were extra. 1889 was another pivotal year in the history of Arrowhead Springs. Hotel partner and manager Sylvester Lyman passed away. At this point the resort was leased to Dr. H. C. Royer. Mark Landers writes of the uncertainty of his doctor title, but the man was already running businesses in Los Angeles, including a Turkish bath. Mr. Landis's book quoted an ad that Dr. Royer put in the Los Angeles Times newspaper, and it listed himself as the manager and physician in charge of the facilities, and that the healing hot springs at the Arrowhead cures more diseases than any other institution like it in the country. Fireworks are so beautiful, but can be so destructive and deadly. On July 4, 1895, the hotel at Arrowhead Springs caught fire again, and it only took a little over an hour for it to be reduced to a pile of ashes. It was suspected that an employee of the hotel was the one responsible. The fire was watched by the people below in the valley, and the pride of San Bernardino was no more. Another chapter in the history of Arrowhead Springs comes to an end. The first hotel resort era is over, and it will be a long time before the phoenix at the Arrowhead rises again. Thank you for joining me for Episode 3 of the History of Arrowhead Springs. In the next episode a new era begins with a new hotel and a bottled spring water business that still exists today.